great. So today I am so pleased to welcome Reverend Hazan ben Daniel Ben Lolo as our guest speaker. Uh, this talk is being co-sponsored with the Spanish Portuguese Synagogue of Montreal, which is the oldest synagogue in Canada dating back to, if you believe it, 1760, when the first Jewish settlers began to arrive in Canada. Uh, so today it has a thriving congregation of about 550 families. Uh, and uh, he is the uh, cantor Hazan there. Uh, February is Jewish Disability Awareness and Inclusion Month, uh, and it's a unified effort among Jewish organizations and communities around the world to raise awareness and foster inclusion of people with disabilities and those who love them. So in today's talk, we will celebrate this, his important work uh, with the Montreal Shira Choir, uh, his work with the choir has been featured in a heartwarming documentary film called Just As I Am, which I hope you've had a chance to view. Uh, Hazan Ben Lolo was born in Casablanca, Morocco, uh, and uh, he and his family settled in Quebec in the early 1970s. I understand he's one of 15 children in his family. Well, oh, well, <laughs> sorry, got it wrong. Okay, that's still pretty impressive. Well, we have. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, and he became the cantor, or Hazan, of the Spanish and Portuguese Synagogue of Montreal at the age of 17. Uh, and in 1991, he received a prestigious scholarship to study Ashkenazi, Yemenite, Syrian, and other forms of Sephardi cantorial styles at the Bell School of Jewish Music, uh, which is an affiliate of Yeshiva University in New York. He's a multi-talented artisan who's designed Kedubot and other beautiful Judaic art. And his passion for singing brought him to perform internationally. Uh, Hazan Ben Lolo received his rabbinical ordination in 2017, uh, and he moved back to Montreal to be closer to his family. And that's where he co-founded the Montreal Shira Choir with his wife Muriel Suisa in 2019. The Shira Choir consists of adult singers over the age of 18 who encounter physical and intellectual challenges in their lives. The choir performs an eclectic repertoire of liturgical songs as well as Broadway and pop hits for enthusiastic synagogues, hospitals, nursing homes, Parliament Hill and citywide events. And their performances have inspired audiences and raised awareness about people living with disabilities who are often excluded and marginalized. Hazan Ben Lolo has been working for the past four decades as a full-time clergy in both Sephardic and Ashkenazi synagogues, deepening his knowledge and strengthening his bond with both communities. He has served the Jewish community while encouraging diversity and dialogue, which he believes helps everyone to grow. He's an award-winning leader in the Jewish community. I think he's won a Governor General's Award, uh, and his interfaith and multicultural work has been recognized uh, widely. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Hazan Daniel Ben Lolo. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. Uh, it uh, warms my heart to, uh, to see some people. I mean, I just very quickly scanned uh, through um, uh, some of the names. Uh, one particular name that stands out right away as I saw her is, is Leah Smith, uh, a very, very wonderful friend of mine uh, that I was just, uh, just thinking about her not too long ago, trying to reconnect with her. And Leah Smith and I worked very closely uh, when we created the Tamir Nishama Choir. And interestingly enough, they're hanging on my wall. This is one of my cho the choirs that we started, the Tamir Neshama Choir, people with developmental disabilities and special abilities. And uh, this is a kind of uh, the background history, uh, really, of my uh, uh, introduction to uh, serving people with, uh, with uh, special needs. And I have to tell you that uh, Leia was actually the one who asked me to come uh, and, and speak to the executive director, uh, Mark Palmer of the Tamir uh, uh, Foundation about being a Judaic advisor. And after being a Judaic advisor for a, for a uh, short while before I became also not only a Judaic advisor, but also directing the choir with Leia, uh, it really inspired me and opened my eyes to a, uh, a, a new 
um, new life, uh, really, that, uh, that I never explored before, to be able to spend time with people with disabilities and special abilities made my life that much better uh, in so many different ways. And I said that to, uh, to Leah at one point, I said, they can teach me way more than I can ever teach them. And that is a motto that I continue saying regularly. Um, so I think that what is beautiful about it is that there is no way to actually pinpoint how important uh, uh, giving the uh, opportunity to open up dialogue with someone who has a special ability because they can teach you so much. I am going to try uh, to, to diversify a little bit in my talk and not be here as an advocate because I am an advocate for people with disabilities, that's, that's a given. But I want to probably and hopefully make you realize that uh, for too long, we have been uh, seeing and uh, um, watching people with special needs just come into our lives and out of our lives without really taking the time. And I'm asking you today to take the time. And that's all it takes, some precious time from you that could be a world of difference. It can mean a world of difference to people with special needs. Let me, um, before we start uh, going and delve into the history of the Montreal Shiro Choir, I hope I can do this quickly enough so we don't have any disruption, but I'm going to share my screen. And when I share my screen, you'll see, well, that's my grandkids. And that's why I'm, I'm here today, because of them. Uh, my wife is here, Muriel, and myself, and my three grandkids. Um, I want to try to share with you a a trailer, just a very quick trailer of uh, the, um, the wonderful Shira Choir, the documentary. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you right now. It's right here. Give me a second and please uh, give me just, here it is. So hopefully we'll be able to see it. And I want to make this a little bigger. And here we go. So this is the, the, just a very quick trailer, and then we'll get back to the, to the talk. Uh, Montreal Shira Choir members are people with all kinds of disabilities, like all of us. We haven't been able to get together, but I'm sure that you're singing. The pandemic gives us this overlay of mortality and everything that we have to sort of deal with. You have to give people their flowers while they're living. Hundreds of moments, of precious moments that we could have been together and it's a huge void. Everything that lives eventually dies. What about you and daddy? If you're not there, who's going to be there for our children? It so sucks to be an ugly pandemic. Just as I you know, individually, they might not have the best voice, but when they come together, something happens. Just as I am. Do you know me? Okay, well, there you go. Um, let's stop sharing. I'm back. I hope you had the very quick synopsis of the of a 20 minute, but there is a 44 minute CBC production that was aired on CBC and it's still available for a year on CBC Gem. And uh, there's a 55 minute one. Interestingly enough, we created the 20 minute version, the Ferja Dame actually, for, uh, to show uh, young children. And this past week was an, um, a tremendous week uh, emotionally because we presented this wonderful, wonderful, uh, documentary, the 20 minute version to all the Jewish schools. And we're now going to also the uh, Catholic uh, school board, et cetera, and all those other schools. We are presenting it to them as part of Jadim, but also part of an inclusion to show them, show the young people that they are blessed 
because they have people with disabilities and people with special abilities that are part of, uh, of our community. Um, the history behind the Montreal Shiro Choir is a um, one that it is a continuity. For me, it's a continuity because for many, many years, um, I started, we started the choir, Leah and I, in, in, in Ottawa. And I think it lasted for 18 years and it still goes on today. And I was so happy to be able to sing with them, bring them to so many different places. We were able to sing in Parliament Hill so many times for Hanukkah. We, um, we uh, for the Festival of Lights, we did so many concerts in the city, in the community for people with disabilities. And we also did it for, you know, senior citizens homes. Uh, we sang for ambassadors. We traveled. We went to Israel. We went to Toronto, to Calgary. And we produced one great uh, and amazing uh, um, production called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And when we did this, it was all about inclusion, all about having young uh, people with special abilities with community players. And we put them together. We created the most fascinating for the 25th year anniversary of Tamir, most fascinating uh, production. It was uh, also uh, made into a documentary. And I have to tell you, it took over the world. <laughs> in the world, in a sense that so many people around the world saw that production and so many people have uh, commented about it. The documentary won uh, a Jewish film festival in Toronto. So suffice it to say that even the players on that uh, uh, play had to be part of a community. So if there was one Joseph singing, there was going to be another a person with disabilities that's represented Joseph. Another from the community had to be a Joseph. So there was two Josephs. There was two King Pharaohs. I was one of them. And the other one, I was Elvis Presley, by the way. Uh, and the other one did the same thing and people with disabilities. So I have to say that it was one of the most gratifying moments in Tamir's history. And they still speak about it on a regular basis. So I had to leave that and I had to come here to, I didn't have to come to Montreal. I wanted to come to Montreal because I wanted to be closer to my family and back to the Spanish and Portuguese where I started my career. And I have to tell you the first thing that I felt, I had everything else, but I felt a void. And that void was what am I gonna do for people with disabilities? And I met some extraordinary people. I, I would hate to start the names, but I'm gonna just throw a couple of names out there, but there's so many people out there. But Carly Goodman is one of them. Uh, you know, I sat down in her office and I spoke to, to her from Federation. I said, you know, this is what I wanna do. And they were also planning many different things about inclusion. And lo and behold, we started the choir and called Montreal Shira Choir. Shira is because my daughter's name, one of my daughter's name is Shira. Shira means song, music. And I, that's how we called our choir. And uh, I have to tell you, we started with four people and now we're 35 people. And we are amazing, not this choir is amazing just because of their soul. It's a small choir with a big heart, the same one as the Tamir Nishama choir. The choir is amazing. The people are amazing. The, the minute they have the spotlight on them, everybody's a diva. Everybody's a star. And the minute they sing, they get a standing ovation. And I don't particularly like, and I, and I, and I would like to echo uh, Mark Palmer's, my executive director from Tamir, don't patronize them. Don't stand up and give them a standing ovation, even if they sound bad. Don't do that. You know, if they sound good, it's because they worked hard. Now you can stand up and give them a standing ovation because they understand it. They feel it. They, 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 are, they are very palpable and they understand every moment of it. And I think it's important to give them that, that right. Um, we are able 
to become better people because of them. When I said that in the beginning, that's not patronizing. That's true. I went to Camp Benabrith, which is Benabrith of Ottawa with uh, Leia and with others. And we brought our uh, participants. They sang for them. They participated in arts and crafts and luncheons and everything. And at the end of the day, I gathered everybody. They did a little concert and I looked at the audience. So they're all very young people. And I looked at them and I said, how many of you have no someone in your family or friends or somebody that has a special ability? It was so such a big question for young people. And slowly one just raised their hand and said, I have a cousin who has a disability. And then unbelievable that so many others either knew someone or family members were someone with, this, with a disability, but it wasn't brought in the forefront. It was all hidden somewhere. And that is what my work is. My work is to make sure that we bring everything out in the open, to make sure that you're gonna see right now, I'm gonna show you a little video of what happens when you give someone with a special ability, give them the forum, give them the spotlight and listen, this is what they can do. So if you can bear with me for another minute or so, I will share my screen and you're going to hear Joshua Ben Lolo. He's actually my, my nephew who is also in the choir. And I want you to, I brought him into uh, the studio and we're making now a CD. And this is one of the many songs that are in, that is in the CD and we made a video of it so please enjoy and i hope you can comment on that later on and tell me what you think to repair the often shattered world i cannot think of a better way than to give a voice to those less heard found a love for me doesn't just die bright in follow my lead I found a girl beautiful and sweet I never knew you were someone waiting for me we're still kids when we fell in love Not knowing what it was I will not give you up this time Darling, just kiss me slow Your heart is all I own And then your eyes, your hope in mine my arms barefoot on the grass listening to our favorite song when you said you looked the best I whispered underneath my breath you heard it darling you look perfect tonight I found a woman Stronger than anyone I know She shares my dreams I hope that someday I'll share her home I found a love To carry more than just my secrets To carry love To carry children of our own we are still kids, but we're so in love Fighting against all odds I know we'll be alright this time Darling, just hold my hand My 
girl, I'll be your man. I see the future in your eyes, baby. I'm dancing in the dark, you between my arms, barefoot on the grass, listening to our favorite song. When you saw you in the dress Looking so beautiful I don't deserve this Darling, you look perfect tonight Tonight. Stop this thing, you go. Okay. Wandering alone. Sorry about that, guys. Trying to here we go. And now stop sharing, and here we are. Sorry about that. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it because I have to tell you that one picture one video is a thousand a million words and for me to listen to him sing i can listen to him over and over again and i kind of pick up on the words he loves that song and he loves other songs he's a great singer and there's so many of us i know that one of our uh, you know is somebody here uh, i saw yosef robinson he's one of our wonderful wonderful singer and uh, in the choir, and he's amazing too. Uh, he's also a cantor, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's in his own right, he's amazing. So when I listen to him sing, when I listen to Joshua sing, and he says, talks about perfect, and he says, and, and some of the words, I don't know if really it sinks in. When you hear somebody say, you know, she found, the, she found he found a woman, uh, he wants to share with that woman more than his secrets. He wants to share his, you know, children and he wants to be together. They have hopes and they have aspirations. Some of them are going to fulfill them. Some of them are not going to fulfill these specific hopes. But the minute we give them love, the minute we show them that there is, you know, unconditional love that they gave us, if we can reciprocate that then we fulfill, we actually fulfill their dreams. And what a gift from God. I mean, if we are able to do that, then we're, we're really angels on earth. They are angels. I mean, we have to match them. We're trying to show them, but I think they should show us more than anything else. So right now, the future for the Montreal Shira Choir is very simple. It's to continue spreading love. So continue spreading positivity, inclusion, uh, not tolerance, because I hate that word tolerance, because I don't want to tolerate you. I want to love you. Um, I want to be able to count you in the community as a full member. Um, there's so many places who says that, you know what, if somebody with a special ability cannot do such and such a thing, that is not true. Because if you give them an opportunity, there's a way, there's a will, there's a way. For a long time, 
people with disabilities did not have a bar mitzvah. We're not able to go up on the, to, to the Torah and, and read or, or to do their bar mitzvah because they said they don't really understand. Well, I, I disagree. And we've shown that many times at Tamir when I was there in, in, in Ottawa, where we had many with Leah also, we worked together on many bar mitzvot and bat mitzvot that were giving them the opportunity to come up and have their time to shine and to be in front of God and declare their faith to Hashem. What a wonderful way to be able to say that we are God's messengers. And there is no better way of doing that than to take those who have been put aside for so many years and uh, let them lead instead of following. And that's, and that's my job. That's my, my, that's my passion. I'm a cantor. I do a lot of singing. I'm a rabbi. I can do a lot of counseling. But you know what? What gives me so much pleasure and so much fulfillment is being able to do what you just saw. Somebody singing and all and having such a great time and, and feeling so good about it and being able to say, wow, had he not given, been given that chance, he would not have created this beautiful video. He would not have created such beautiful moments with their mother and father and siblings. You know, uh, I have people in the choir that came in not uttering a word and uh, accompanied by their parent. And the parent, after one of the rehearsals, told me, I'm so sorry. I, I thought maybe they would open up or anything, but he, that they don't want to sing. I said, you bring them back next week. Oh, but, you know, we don't, want, we don't want to abuse it. Just bring them back. They brought them back the week after. Same thing. And I said, bring them back. You continue bringing them back until they find their light, until they find their spot. And you want to hear them today? If you hear them today, you astounding. And the parents, I, I, I look at the reactions, not of the, of the participant. I look at the reaction of the parent. You know what it is to have a parent see their child flourish? It's an amazing miracle. You know, like someone who never heard before and now has been given a device where they can hear or see. Here, you're looking at your child flourish, open up and say, you know what? Here I am. This is who I really am, right? Don't patronize me. And I think that is why we're here today. We're here today because we all have that gift. I'm going to try not to be for clamped again. Uh, we all have that gift of giving because it's so much better to give than to receive so much better and uh, i can go on and on and on and discuss it but i would like to just to finish up uh, then i'm going to get some questions from you because maybe that will stir up some some new direction in the conversation we are not uh, we have been blessed to have uh, good friends evan beloff and noah leon and my wife, who's been working so hard to, to make sure the choir is, is on in sync and the information is out there working with Federation and working with the community members, it's an amazing feat. And, and I have to give her uh, all the kudos. And the interesting part is that um, we have a beautiful documentary called Just As I Am. The song, special song was written for the choir um, the documentary, if you haven't seen it, is a must-see. Must-see because it's so powerful. It has the ups and downs of life and the challenges and the opportunities. Um, and this, so far, is just shown, it was shown in the Miami Film Festival. It uh, has been, uh, uh, you know, mentioned in, uh, for an award. And um, we want to continue building from here and it, it, it could only happen and it can only uh, come to fruition if if everybody puts in a little bit of an effort just a tiny bit of an effort and you'll see the results will be so satisfactory not only for you and for your family and for your friends and for your community 
but we will learn some new things. We will learn a, a way of life uh, that for so long has been hidden. And I hope that we, um, uh, we can see this in the next clip. I have a, a one more clip that I want to show you with your uh, indulgence. It's called Hallelujah, and it's been given uh, um, the Sheba uh, Medical Center of, in Israel, one of the top nine uh, hospitals in the world, um, asked uh, us to, uh, to make a video to show Montreal and Leonard Cohen is like kind of staple in Montreal because he was born here and he went to the synagogue here. So the kind of uh, in, in Adeshar Shamaim here. And he said, you know what, let's do a represent Canada in the worldwide stage uh, when they did the, uh, the Sheba uh, uh, International. Um, so I did this video and we sent it to them and it was a big hit in Israel. And we sang with the Shalva Choir, which is another uh, choir that, that has disabilities. And we were, it was a great uh, combination. So without further ado, this is called the Hallelujah from Leonard Cohen. And um, uh, very quick, uh, I met Leonard Cohen a few times, but one of the times that uh, I met him, uh, it was after a concert. And when I met uh, uh, Leonard Cohen, uh, I had taught his cousin's son his bar mitzvah. And when I saw him and there was in, I was introduced to him, Leonard Cohen turned around and said, oh, you're, you're Hassan Ben Lolo, the one who taught my cousin. So he had a great memory. I don't know how he did it. And then I told him I would love to sing your hallelujah song in concert and put some Hebrew into it and also sing it in the synagogue. And that's what I do. In the synagogue, we sing this song. And uh, without further ado, here is... Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, uh, My Way. Let me see if we can do this. And here it is. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fall, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing strong but you needed proof you saw her bathing on the roof her beauty and the moonlight over through you she tied you to a kitchen chair she broke your throne and she cut your hair and from your lips she drew the house Hallelujah, 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 I 
tried my best, it wasn't much I could feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but Hazan, you're going to have to unmute yourself. I needed to mute everyone because I okay. the microphone on. Sorry about that. Sorry. Okay, great. Great. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, wow. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. There's so much more that we can say, but I'd rather find out what, what's on your mind. So uh, maybe we can... Um, uh, check the the questions. Does uh, does anybody have a question? We uh, do you want to unmute the people for the questions because I don't know if I. Um, no, them. we're gonna we're gonna have question and answer where we unmute okay. uh, afterwards uh, because we're still recording. So if anyone Beautiful. has a question uh, that they want to ask uh, anonymously, you could put it in the chat and uh, it'll be part of our recording of this talk. Beautiful. Uh, um, but if you want to wait uh, and no. later, that's fine too. No, I, 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 uh, I, no, I'm fine with this. I'm just going. I wonder. I just want to, uh, you know, pick up on some of the comments. Um, uh, Lisbeth, you know, says, as a parent of an adult son with special needs, I appreciate those words greatly. I think that it's all words that we all have inside us. I mean, I'm sure that we all think the same way when we see someone with a disability, uh, you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna feel like a pity. And that's one thing that I, that, I, that I have in my mind that I wanna see the young people not see them as somebody to have pity to, uh, of or just to watch them and say, well, I don't wanna get to know them very well because, you know, they are, different uh different is great that's the beauty different is beautiful and uh, there is so much talent out there there is so much uh untapped talent that i am um i'm in search <laughs> to tell you the truth i'm in search of this great talent because there are so many people who can do so many beautiful things and there's like hidden gems out there and I hope that, you know, talks like this are going to be able to bring out the best in the people. And if people, you, know, you say to yourself, well, I know someone and, you know, if a congregation or a community says, wow, I know more than one person, uh, let's put these people together and sing some songs and, 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 and do something. Uh, so you create your own choir. You can create your own little uh, club or, or, or things like that. And I think by doing so, you, oh, you, you know, you're going to be able to, to, uh, to give a gift to your community or to your synagogue or to whoever, you know, to whatever community you belong to. Uh, I, hope, I hope that the talk that we're having today is not something that is redundant in a sense that you probably will say, well, I've heard this before and I, uh, you know, maybe it's great to be reminded once in a while. Uh, I know for a fact that um, it, we, I rehearse with people with special needs on a weekly basis. I do it sometimes on a bigger scale and, or on a smaller scale. And I have to tell you that uh, watching, watching, uh, you know, every week go by, I actually learn more. 
I learn every week something different. And if I am able to do that, then it's a teaching moment and a learning moment every week. We cannot do, do that on a regular basis because a lot of it is routine that we live, we go to work, we come back, we do our, our errands, we do our, our, you know, the strategy is the same here. Every time I meet someone with a special ability, it's another facet, another leaf, another page. Uh, we are now working on duplicating Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat right here in Montreal. We did it in Ottawa. It was a big success. Now I want to do it in Montreal. Why I want to do it in Montreal? Because I love the whole concept of inclusion. I, I love uh, uh, mixing up people with special needs and community players. I want to get young people in the chorus from schools so that you know they participate also and they are able to join us on stage. So there are so many different ways of giving them an opportunity that I cannot wait uh, for the next stage. You know, and I'm uh, I'm all I'm a very excited person. <laughs> To generally, I love. I'm. I have ADHD, probably that uh, that is off the chart. Why? Because I have to do something every day, and I got to create something. I got to be on the move all the time. And for me, truthfully, people with disabilities or special abilities uh, uh, test me all the time with this ADHD. I got to be on my on on the call all the time. I want to thank, you know. Uh, the, the, the volunteers. I want to thank the volunteers that, that are with me all the time. Uh, some great volunteers, people in the community uh, that have stepped to the plate. They're there all the time and they help us without uh, hesitation. They are always uh, on hand when I need them. And it's a big job. It's a big job. And I need these volunteers because it's so eclectic. When you come into a room, uh, there's uh, some high functioning, some low functioning. I know that Leah Smith would understand all of this. And she taught me something that was very interesting. When I first started, um, I had some participants come up to me and talk to me for like five minutes, 10 minutes, and I would go on and on. I didn't know what to say. I, I had to listen. So Leah said to me, you're, you're too nice on that one. You have to be able to channel it. So don't worry by saying, listen, I understand you. I want to I wanna listen to you. But you know what? This is not the time. And you know what? It works. It works because don't patronize them by saying, well, I'll listen to you just because you have a special ability. Absolutely not. Treat them like adults as they are. And, uh, and it's amazing what can come out of it. It's, it's really, really amazing. So my life is fulfilled, is full. I have a beautiful family. I have beautiful children. I have beautiful grandchildren. Uh, I have a great job. Uh, I have a wonderful community. Uh, and the most of all, uh, what makes me continue to thrive is working with people with special needs. And, and that, that for me, is uh, says it all. So I want to uh, take this opportunity to open up the floor in a sense. Uh, I know that we were, I don't feel like stopping the, the recording, but if you have to stop the recording, but please do so. Uh, I think by answering some questions, I'm going to take a very quick look at the chat. The great stuff. Thank you so much for all your comments. Uh, <laughs> need a choir at Maimonides also. Bring them some joy. That's Sari. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we're there anytime you want. Uh, so which month is that of Marilyn? I like to pronounce Yadaim as Yadaim or Yadaim, meaning hands. That's Yosef D. Robinson, who is in my choir, um, who is also a member of the choir. So here I have some very beautiful um, uh, comments, the, the performance uh, Judy, thank you. Judith Belton says, I don't cry much, but I am weeping tears of appreciation and admiration. Well, it's thank you. And I think that's what's important is those tears are uh, treasures. Why? Because they're the ones who are going to dictate the next step. 
which is now I cried because I believe in them. Now let me do my part and, and, and I'm sure you're doing great and you're doing so much. And uh, so next time you see a person with a disability or a special ability, you know that there's great potential out there. Uh, we are listening with tears and our eyes. Wow, bravo, that goosebumps, beautiful. Thank you so much. The, these, you know what? It's them. It's not me. Me, I'm only the, uh, what we call is a Kelly. I am also, I'm, all, I'm only the, the vehicle uh, in which these great uh, human beings uh, show their stuff and uh, show their talent. Um, there is a Kabbalistic interpretation that says something very interesting. You know, there's a story about uh, um, uh, someone who's been walking with a stick and two, and two pots, uh, and every day that person would go to uh, the well and gather water, and uh, that person would walk to the village after picking up the water in these two containers with a stick in her back, on her back, and uh, she noticed something very interesting. Oh, the one side of the road was always watered because there was a crack on that pot and the other side was complete. So she always came with only one pot full and one pot was mostly empty. It, then she realized there's something wrong because one side of the road was always with flowers. The other side was always dry. And she looked at the pot more closely and she saw a crack on the pot and it always let some water out. The moral of the story is that wherever that crack was, it flowered, it gave water. And in all of us, there's a crack pot. So we're all crackpots. So you know what? It's a wonderful thing because we don't have to contain all this wonderful light and, and this beauty inside of us. We can share it with others. And I think that's the story about uh, people with, uh, you know, special abilities. They have so much to, to, to teach us. And I hope that we're uh, the, the crackpots of the next generation. Uh, I, I see a lot of people coming in now. So I feel bad. Should we start again? <laughs> because I just saw a few people coming in. So I don't know if you want to start again, we can do it. No, so no, no, no. Uh, Hassan Benlolo, uh, before we stop the recording, I thought I would just uh, uh, ask you if you have some ideas about what congregations can do to be more inclusive of people with special abilities. And I love that term, special abilities, rather than yeah. disabilities. That's really lovely. I said that to, uh, to Leia again. I said, to, I said, we have to, it's called disability. I think we have to diss. You know, the dissing thing, when you diss something, you, that means you let go of something or you just throw it out. So let's diss the disability. Uh, and then she just, just mark down ability. And then special ability is perfect. Um, what can you do for the, as a congregation? I think that was the whole impetus when I first came. Carly Goodman has spoken to me and Federation. They were working on this whole concept of uh, inclusion in the communities, in the synagogues, uh, accessibility, uh, information about people with, with the special abilities. What can we do to make their lives better? How can we include them in everyday life uh, and, and communal life? Uh, what can you do? It, it's, it's very difficult because everybody and all the communities have special needs. <laughs> Every community has a special need. Um, forget about the special needs people. The communities need it. They should stand up and say, we are, we are you know, the poorer of not having these wonderful people included in, in, in our services, in our, uh, in our everyday life. Get Someone who had a special ability, who uh, you know maybe high functioning, uh, let them work at the synagogue. Uh, uh, let them be a gabai or somebody who's going to take care of the uh, some of the not the services but themselves. But you know, let them feel. And I, we did go somewhere. Uh, I think with Tamir at in New York. I think it was where you had someone who was charged by, by, by being the gabai, putting the books together, making sure the talitot were there, making sure this guy was like thriving. He, was, he couldn't wait to wake up in the morning and couldn't 
didn't want to go to sleep until because he didn't want to miss anything. Give them an opportunity. Um, make them work in the office. You know, come in. Don't don't get them to stuff envelopes. It's it's you know what that should be done automatically. Or don't you know what? Just do this electronically. They're much more that's much better than that. Uh, let them come into the office. Teach them how to guide them, how to talk to you know with an assistant or with a partner. Let them. Hello, your your yard site is next week. We just want to make sure that you come to the synagogue or light a candle the night before. Give them a script. Let them let them try it out, and then give them an opportunity. And you'll see. Let them be ushers. Let them be ushers when you come into the synagogue and be greeted by someone with a special ability. My goodness, it's going to lighten up the whole synagogue. Let them open the ark. Let them go up to the Torah and let them give them, give them an aliyah to the Torah. Let them be on the board. Let them be on the board of, our, of directors as a representative to someone with special needs for others who have special needs. If they sit down, let them say something. Listen, to tell you the truth, and with all due respect, there's a lot of people on the board that, uh, you know, they're there as decoration. It's, it, it, listen, it, in every board, it's okay. It, that, no, listen, hold on. Let me, in decoration, I mean in a nice way, because you know what? Every house needs a decoration. Every synagogue needs decoration. When I say decoration, I mean they're there. They're willing to give their advice, but you have to be hands-on. So how do you get hands-on people? Get somebody with a disability and they will get on it. They will do the task right away. You just say it once. Us, me included, and everybody, you know, yes, it's a great idea. I think we're going to format this thing. Okay, great. Let's bring it, bring it up to the next meeting. And it's going to be to the next meeting. Let's be truthful. The meetings are going to go on and on and on. And we're going to have tasks that have been in the strategic plan for the past two years and still not there. And in every agency, every synagogue, it's okay. It's, that's how we run. But get somebody with a special needs to get on the board and say, you know what? So-and-so, I want you to make a flyer with this and I want you to go and talk to these people. And you know what? Next week, it'll be done. Guaranteed, because they're focused. They're focused. That's all there is to it. So what I'm trying to say is that what can you do for your community? Involve them. Get them involved. Get them involved in any way, shape, or form. And then you will determine where to place them in a sense like, okay, your forte is this. And your forte is this. Right? We all have fortes. We all have a, a place for us. They have a place, but they need to see that you're opening up the place for them. Right now, they have a place, but they're waiting for it, and you are hesitating. So when you think about it, it'll never happen. You're hesitating to open the place. They're waiting for the place. Open it. Give them the place. If it doesn't work, try again. Maybe that's not, it's not in their level right now they need another level they need something else some of them are more outwardly some of them are more introverts find a place and if you do that you will be a better community for sure thank you there's uh one more question i think before we uh stop the recording uh that i think would be useful to have included uh it's around um uh zoom technology and uh maybe you could talk a little bit about your experience with uh uh, people with, uh, with, with special abilities and um, how you have incorporated Zoom get, since the um, uh, rise of COVID? Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting question because you're going to see in the documentary also the, the progress. You know, usually a documentary is probably for every, um, for every 40 hours of filming, is one hour of with editing on a documentary. That's how much editing there is ha that happens. Because of COVID, our documentary was supposed to be done in uh, 40 hours, the whole thing, right? And then reduced to a 44 or 55 minute uh, documentary. 
it lasted two years. And the reason because, you know, COVID came, we had to stop production. COVID came, we had to reduce, uh, you know, they couldn't, we couldn't go here, we couldn't go there, we had to do it this way, we had to do it on Zoom, and they had to film on Zoom. And you had to sanitize everything and you had to get permission from the families to go into. So there were so many obstacles that we had to, uh, to do Zoom. And when we were on Zoom, it was amazing, amazing thing happened is that even though it kept the connection going, it kept that, that link together. And that was the beauty about it. The, the downside was that, as you can see in the documentary, they need the human touch. Some of them couldn't handle it. It was very stressful, was depressing because they wanted to. And so what did we do? We, at one, at points, we, we used to go and, and bring bags of goodies. And, and uh, you know, uh, we had the summer party, we had the uh, Hawaiian parties. What do we do? We took bags and we stuffed them with goodies uh, 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 some uh, sweatshirts, uh, hats, uh, all kinds of stuff. And we brought them to each one and we documented each thing. And then after that, that evening, we had a party on Zoom. So that was the great thing, you know, to be able to put these two things together. You can't do only Zoom and you can't do, and you can't, you have to follow the, the protocol. We were able to do everything and meet halfway. So Zoom is a, is a miracle. Zoom is a wonderful vehicle. The internet, it, the world is much smaller, but there's nothing like the human touch. So it's much better and makes us, you know, wait for better times. And at least we are, we are able to see each other. We are able to talk to each other, sing together. Uh, and we can't wait for tomorrow. And when tomorrow comes, we meet again. So we just started meeting again. Great, great feeling. Uh, it's it's a wonderful, uh, you know. It's like if you, if you, uh, you know, you renew your vows, <laughs> right? You you love you love your spouse, but you know what? When you, you renew your vow, you feel like wow, it's starting all over again, you know. So there's a good thing to it, right? And that's, I think, I, I hope, I hope that uh, the Zoom is going to soon be a, only a, a, uh, a side dish and not the main course. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, uh, Sam, I think let's uh, stop the recording now.